Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of how in the heck can it take tech Age so long to pump out another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at GPU rendering performance across eight different rendering engines and to do so we'll be taking advantage of AMD's entire current generation of RDNA 2 based Radeons as well as Nvidia's entire current generation of Ampere based GeForces. And for good measure and to show generational improvement we're going to include a few classics as well including the 1080 Ti and uh, Radeon 7. And while we're testing out eight different rendering engines here, AMD is unfortunately only supported in three of them, which includes Blender, Radeon Pro Render, and LuxCore Render. To keep things simple, we'll start with those in the results. For the NVIDIA side, we're going to be including Octane, V-Ray, Arnold, Keyshot, and Redshift. Now, if you come here to see performance results for one particular rendering engine, such as the one you use day to day, we won't feel any real ill regard if you go down to the description below and go straight to that result. Now, in our results, you will notice that we don't have any workstation-specific cards such as that from the Radeon Pro or Quadro series. And this is simply because those cards don't offer any additional benefit to rendering performance over the uh, gaming cards, which is a great thing because it means you can just buy a normal gaming card and still get great performance. Now, you might notice we have a Radeon Pro sitting here just inconspicuously, and that just might be a hint for an upcoming video. Now, we'd be remiss to mention that we do have a article based on this video on our website which has additional performance graphs and also a little bit more information in some cases. So if you want access to that or also want to know how to support the channel, just please check out the description below. And with that, let's move into a look at the AMD and NVIDIA current product stacks. At the moment, AMD doesn't offer low-end parts for its RDNA 2 lineup, with the recently re released RX 6700 XT sitting at the bottom with an SRP of 479. If you want to go with anything less expensive than that on the Radeon side, then you'd have to go with the previous generation card. Unfortunately, we do have a few in our test results here today that will help show you what to expect generation over generation. With the current generation, AMD stands out with its larger frame buffers offered overall, although Nvidia manages to win the bandwidth battle thanks to its use of GDDR6X. When it comes to an ultimate creator card, it's hard to compete with Nvidia's GeForce RTX 3090. As we'll see in multiple tests throughout this video, Nvidia's ray tracing cores found in its RTX cards can make a big difference with performance, to the point where it's pretty much impossible to ignore sometimes. At this point in time, GPUs offering 8GB should be considered a bare minimum for either gamers or creators, because even if less than that is not limiting you today, you will almost certainly crave more over the life of the card. That rationale might make the 12GB RTX 3060 look really attractive, but the performance results will be the ultimate judge of that. And here's a quick look at our test workstation. While we're using Ryzen Threadripper as our platform of choice, we'd quicker recommend AMD's and Intel's higher-end mainstream chips as the higher clock speeds will improve general responsiveness from applications and also viewport performance in certain modes. If in addition to GPU work you also need lots of memory bandwidth or many cores, then a platform like Ryzen Threadripper is pretty damn hard to beat. Note that all of the graphics cards we tested were equipped with the latest drivers available as of the time of testing. The only exceptions to be made with the versions are with the 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti, which use the respective review driver. And with that, let the rendering begin. We have another video planned for the near future to dig deeper into the overall performance of Blender 2.93, but we wanted to start with it in this video as well, considering it's become a truly de facto point of reference for rendering, and one that sees both AMD and Nvidia offer sponsorship dollars to fund development for. Starting with the iconic Blender BMW scene, we can quickly gain an understanding of just how far we've come in rendering performance over the past handful of years. The Radeon RX 590 was a competent GPU in its own right at its launch, but it's definitely not great for rendering in 2021. Overall, in this simpler scene, Nvidia manages to take a demanding lead, with AMD's top-end RX 6900 XT somehow falling behind Nvidia's lower-end RTX 3060 Ti. As we're sure you know very well, not all projects will render the same way, so let's check out the more complex Classroom project next. But what do you know? AMD's Radeons perform a lot better in this Classroom project, although if you've been paying attention to our Blender benchmarking for a while, you may already be aware of that since it's been the case for as long as we've been testing it. Unfortunately for AMD, however, these results don't reflect ray tracing acceleration, such as that made available with Nvidia's RTX series GPUs and the Optics API. Naturally, we have that performance angle up next. If Nvidia's Optics API and its RT core use resulted in weaker quality renders, then sticking to CUDA would be a no-brainer. After all, we always want the best possible quality even if it requires a bit more time to render. The reality is though, that Optics and CUDA renders look identical, and at this point have parity with the most important features. In other words, if you have an RTX GPU, you shouldn't think twice about enabling Optics in Blender's preferences. 
Comparing CUDA to optics paints the picture of improved performance well enough on its own, but consider that with our OpenCL renders of the same scene, AMD's top-end RX 6900 XT rendered the project in 40 seconds, whereas Nvidia's RTX 3060 Ti with optics performs the same. Simply enabling ray tracing acceleration will make it feel like you just upgraded your GPU. Luckily for AMD, the EV render engine can't take advantage of ray tracing acceleration like Cycles can, so let's see how that can shake things up. Blender 2.93's release came with the promises of improved EV features and performance, but we didn't expect to see enormous gains like these when compiling the results. We originally didn't even plan on having 2.92 EV results in here, but once we understood the actual gains, we reinstalled each GPU again to test the previous version with the current graphics drivers. One of the best parts about this improved performance is that quality hasn't gone down any. Rather, it's actually gotten better. You yourself can give this a shot with any EV project. Simply render it the same way in 2.92 and 2.93, and you should see slightly better results with the latter. Both AMD and Nvidia have gained handsomely here, although Nvidia seems to get a super slight advantage overall. For example, with 2.92, the RTX 3070 placed just behind the RX 6900 XT, whereas it now manages to place ahead in 2.93. So, even though EV doesn't support NVIDIA's RT cores, it still manages to lead the pack. It's worth noting that EV will transition to use the Vulkan API in the future, and when that happens, we'll likely see slightly different scaling, but hopefully even better performance. On that note, it's time to use Blender once again for another rendering test, one involving AMD's own Radeon Pro Render. With Radeon Pro Render, scaling across all of our tested projects is pretty similar, with the older GPUs, including the GTX 1080 Ti, sinking to the bottom of the pile in a significant way. Despite being a Radeon branded renderer, Nvidia's current gen GPUs outpace AMD's latest and greatest a wee bit overall, although the RTX 3080 and RX 6900 XT could be considered similar. Looking at the classroom project converted for ProRender use, what's interesting about the results is how differently the project scales in ProRender versus Cycles. AMD's top-end GPUs soar to the top of this respective chart with cycles, but fails to edge out NVIDIA the same way with ProRender. It's worth noting that the current stable version of Radeon ProRender for Blender doesn't support 2.93. There is, however, a beta available, but after some testing, we decided to wait for the stable release since it seems like the performance aspect needs a little more work. With that, let's move on to the final renderer we've tested here that can include Radeon, Lux Core Render. The latest pre-compiled binary for Luxmark represents the 2.2 version of LuxCore Render, and because 2.5 is effectively available now, that means a completely up-to-date Luxmark may show different results. Nonetheless, we still see some great scaling here, with the Radeons holding their own against the G-Forces. Even still, Nvidia clearly has an edge overall. One result in particular that stood out to us here was with the Radeon 7, which failed to outpace the RX 5700 XT in previous tests, but does manage to do so in this Luxmark one. That's at least the case with this hall bench scene. In our second tested food scene, both GPUs come off as equals. And unfortunately, this is where Radeon has to get off the bus, as we're moving into five renderers that only support NVIDIA on Windows, starting with Octane. Octane Render was one of the first NVIDIA-focused renderers that implemented optics ray tracing acceleration, and the company is obviously very happy with it, considering there's a special menu option for testing RTX on and off with any scene you have loaded. With our chosen God Rays project here, it's clear that RTS can dramatically improve rendering performance to an even greater degree than most of the others we've seen. We're talking performance that's more than doubled in some cases. The GeForce GTX 1080 Ti is still a great GPU in its own right, but we feel that gamers would get more use out of it than creators today, because the current crop of Nvidia cards are simply unmatched. That's even without ray tracing acceleration, where even the lowly RTX 3060 proves close to 50% more competent than the GTX 1080 Ti. But, turn RTX on, and that same GPU turns into a screamer. Fortunately, the standalone Octane Bench benchmark backs up our real-world test pretty well. As Nvidia's Jensen Huang loves to say, the more you buy, the more you save. In Octane's case, the GPU you choose really does make an incredible difference to how many frames you can render in a given amount of time. Naturally, if your budget allows, adding multiple GPUs will accelerate the rendering further, which is what we're sure you love to hear during ongoing chip shortages. With our first V-Ray render, using CUDA exclusively, we're seeing some great scaling all around, and more proof that the GTX 1080 Ti is getting up there in age. We can also see that the 3080 Ti, despite costing hundreds less than the RTX 3090, effectively delivers the same performance. 
Considering we're only dealing with CUDA here, it's really quite something to see the new lower end RTX 3060 outpace the GTX 1080 Ti pretty dramatically. With a quick look at the same CUDA only tests in the official V-Ray benchmark, we can see slightly different scaling than what we saw with our Flowers project, but that's really to be expected considering we're dealing with completely different scenes, with different levels of complexity. Interestingly, according to this benchmark, the GTX 1080 Ti doesn't fall nearly as far behind as the RTX 3060. CUDA feels old school at this point, so let's move over to optics. It's interesting that the gains seen from optics and V-Ray are not quite as distinct as they are in a renderer like Octane. You'll still definitely want to keep the RTX option enabled, however, since any performance improvement is going to be appreciated. But because optics doesn't make quite as large a difference in V-Ray as some others, heterogeneous rendering stands to benefit even more, albeit as long as you have a really beefy CPU. Let's see how our 32-core Threadripper chip spices things up. Using a CPU like the Ryzen Threadripper 3970X might not be the best idea for a test like this because it's not representative of a standard workstation choice. However, it still shows that big CPUs can in fact deliver a great benefit in rendering. With the 3970X and a GTX 1080 Ti tag teaming, we see render times on par with the RTX 3070 Ti running optics. If you're a creator, you'll always want the latest GPU architecture you can get your hands on, but it's still nice to see the CPU contributing so much here, especially if you happen to have a many-core CPU in your own rig and want to better utilize it in more workloads. To kick off our look at Redshift performance, we're going to use our somewhat simple radio scene, which as we'll see in a moment, benefits more from optics ray tracing acceleration than the standalone Age of Vultures benchmark. If you're a Redshift user stuck with a GTX 1080 Ti, you should feel pretty happy about the overall performance you're getting considering the car's age, although it will still be hard to ignore the newer GPUs that support ray tracing acceleration. There are a couple of specific results that stand out to us here. The RTX 2080 Ti somehow falls behind the RTX 3060 when using optics, but the rules reverse in the Age of Vultures benchmark. Clearly though, enabling optics almost mimics a GPU upgrade. The RTX 3060 with optics enabled closely matches the performance of the RTX 3070 Ti while using CUDA. And here's a look at the much more complex Age of Vultures benchmark for some slightly different scaling. We've tested this same scene in 3DS Max and the scaling is nearly identical. So while we're not seeing quite as large an advantage with ray tracing acceleration in this particular scene, it should be clear by now that you'll want to default your workflow to using RTX. In many of our tests so far, we've run both CUDA and Optics tests separately to highlight the differences between them. So if you're wondering why we don't do that with Arnold, it's simply because Optics is the default, and will work even if you don't have a GeForce with hardware accelerated ray tracing. If you do have one, you'll simply see performance improvements automatically. With our render of the iconic Jaguar E-Type, we're given yet another clear as day example of how the GTX 1080 Ti isn't the rendering powerhouse it once was, thanks in large part to lacking ray tracing acceleration. That acceleration allows a low-end current-gen GPU, such as the RTX 3060, to leap far ahead of the Pascal-based top-end GTX 1080 Ti. Funny enough, the RTX 3060 even manages to bring more memory to the table. Like Autodesk's Arnold, Luxion's Keyshot will automatically take advantage of ray tracing acceleration if a GPU offers it, and also like Arnold, Keyshot highlights that it's time to upgrade your GTX 1080 Ti. There are a couple of odd results in this chart worth highlighting. In multiple projects we've tested, the RTX 3070 Ti fell behind the RTX 3070, which is yet another anomaly that forces us to reinstall both cards in order to sanity check, and after doing so, the results held. We can't explain why these results happen, but we're well beyond being surprised when they creep up. We saw something similar in Keyshot 9, where this 2070 Super placed ahead of the higher end 2080 Super. As it stands today, we'd suggest the RTX 3070 over the 3070 Ti if Keyshot is your primary design tool, since it does prove faster at this current point in time. If the RTX 3070 Ti had a bigger frame buffer, that'd make it a no-brainer choice, but no one wants to pay more for less performance than their tool of choice. It might also be worth noting that this is one renderer that seems to let the RTX 3070 flex its stuff really well, with the performance delta between it and the RTX 3080 Ti being more notable here than in most of the other renderers we've tested. For a quick look at power consumption, we ran all of our tested GPUs through a Blender rendering workload, as well as a 3 d Mark stress test. We do this because the gaming workloads tend to draw a lot more power than rendering, as is easily seen here. With either metric, NVIDIA's top-end RTX 3080 Ti and the RTX 3090 proved to be the power-hungriest in our lineup, but they also happen to deliver the best performance, so it's really hard to complain. 
While its performance makes the Radeon 7 not as relevant today as it was at its launch, we felt compelled to point out that we have no idea why its power consumption is so modest in comparison to the rest of the GPUs here. We've seen the same behavior from that same GPU in the past, although the delta between them is far more pronounced today. We ran the same GPU in the classroom project as a sanity check, and it does indeed use a little more power there, but still not as much as we'd expect for a top-end Vega. Well, if you've made it this far, then hopefully you now have a better understanding of which GPU you would like to shove into your new workstation. Assuming you can actually find one, the market being what it is. Fortunately, the rumor mill hints that the GPU supply situation should actually be getting a little bit better over the next few months, and we really hope that's the case because doing in-depth content like this isn't quite as fulfilling when we know half of you won't even be able to get the card you're looking for, especially without being price gouged. But even still, this performance looked like some of our others in the past has proven that no two workloads are always built alike, so you really have to understand your workload and buy the GPU for the one you use the most. But overall, throughout all of these performance results, something is made very clear. It's really, really hard to beat NVIDIA. Even in AMD's own Radeon Pro render, NVIDIA ends up beating out AMD at its top end. And in Blender, it's not like it's just cycles and optics that out outperforms AMD. It's also the EV engine, which can't even use any of those special features. And while we didn't cover it here, the viewport is also far better supported on NVIDIA than AMD for some reason. And that's obviously nonsensical because AMD's hardware is really competent. So it's clear to us that in some cases, AMD drivers definitely need some polish. And in the future, Blender in particular is going to be moving towards the Vulkan API, especially for EV. So when that happens, we might very well see AMD soar to the top again, or it'd be nice and exciting to see, because AMD really does do well on Vulkan. So we'll see what happens there. On that note, if you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to the channel and share this video with someone who you think could even benefit from it. You could also hit up the description below to check out our written version or figure out how to support the channel if you would like to. So until next time, have fun creating.